You're listening to the New World To Go podcast with your hosts, Redbird and BDLG. Hello and welcome to the 100th episode of New World To Go. I'm your host, Redbird, and with me is BDLG. Bordy, dude, episode 100. We made it, man. We It's 100 yeah. episodes of uh, New World To Go. It's pretty crazy, man. A hundred episodes is pretty bonkers. We've been doing this for a hundred weeks, man. Let that sink in for a minute. One hundred weeks is how long we've been doing this podcast. That's wild, dude. Yeah, and and what's even more wild is the game's only been out for three months. So, <laughs> so a lot, a large majority of those episodes were, you know, when we were, you know, kind of speculating or like covering whatever news they dropped that month. So. Yeah, man, it, it's good to have New World out. It's it's good to have been, you know, obviously with you, dude. A hundred podcast episodes, which I, if we add, I think, to our uh, Elder Scrolls Online episodes, I think we're like we've already, I think we're well over like one fifty, maybe as far as podcasts together as a team. Yeah. So ho- well, hopefully, maybe the- even more than that, because of the Ashes podcast too that we did for a good while. So we've we've we we probably we're probably pushing the two hundred mark as a team. But but the one hundred for one podcast is pretty pretty crazy, man. It is. It is. Episodes, it bro. is crazy. It is crazy yeah. for sure. Thank you guys for joining us on this episode. Uh, it, thank you guys for your continued support, the five star rating review, the subs on YouTube. You guys are killing it. We appreciate it. Again, if you haven't done those things already, please do. It helps us out. Uh, tremendously and uh yeah we as promised uh uh, episode 100 we do have a special guest for you guys uh it happens to be greg uh from the amazon game team uh the community lead uh he was kind enough to join us for episode 100 so uh, you will have we have a um an interview with greg coming up and uh yeah it's gonna be a great episode Bordy. uh i figured we'd use the top of the episode just to kind of you know uh, re, I guess re, not relive or rehash, but just on, on looking back on a hundred episodes, uh, you know, obviously the, the success of new world, uh, at launch surprised us even, you know, after a uh, hundred, you know, however many episodes of podcasting and covering the game, dude, it, it's just, uh, it's great to have a game to, to have a podcast about that's live that we can play on a regular basis, but it's also great that the game is new world. And, and it's actually a fun game that we get to play and, and enjoy every day. Yeah, I would agree with that for sure. The game is and has been incredibly addicting to me for sure. I know it's had its ups and downs without a doubt, but I do feel like now it's headed in a in an upward tra- trajectory. Uh, there's a lot of things to look forward to, I think, with the game, and I am excited for the future of it, man. I, I am. I am. We'll be here for another hundred episodes and beyond. Uh, we'll be here for forever, I think, covering this game. I, I really thoroughly enjoyed it, and I'm very much looking forward to the future. And it's going to be fun to kind of look back on this episode and where we are now. It's always fun to kind of reflect. It would be fun to go back and like listen to episode one or the very early yeah. episodes to see how kind of how much the game has actually evolved over time to see like where we were then and where we are now. And it'll be a lot of fun again to look over, you know, in, in even 20 episodes from now, 20 weeks from now, or whatever, just to kind of rehash where we're at and see where the game is as has gone and it's it's crazy to look back and see the strides that new world has made and uh it's gonna be exciting to see where it goes yes yes uh you know it's kind of weird the hundredth episode is kind of weird Bordy, because it's like well we're hitting our 100th episode and then in two episodes we'll have our two year anniversary yeah so uh <laughs> yeah. so we might yeah. have, uh, we'll have to get something obviously uh planned for that we've been you know uh working on episode 100 for a little bit so so maybe we can do something special on that day uh, as well so a nice couple of weeks of podcasting hopefully for you guys uh to listen to uh you know and again we can't uh we can't thank you guys enough for your continued support and and patronage and listening to the podcast uh it, it's crazy cool to to have people come over to twitch and say like yo i've been listening to the podcast for a long time or i listen to the podcast on the way to work today and it, it's cool to have like this content that kind of lives outside of live content because you know what i mean these people get to they get to consume the podcast on their way home from work or or whenever they want to and it's kind of cool to have a place in those people's or your guys's i guess since you're listening to the podcast your guys' life every day that you get to kind of, kind of, you know, at least once a week, sit down and listen to our, the podcast. It, it's it's incredibly cool, and it's just something that I guess is humbling. Um, 
for me anyways is is to have you guys stop by the, the twitch channels and, and say what's up and stuff it's really cool so yeah i agree it's always a pleasure whenever something like that happens it always makes my day whenever someone stops by and they say hey found you through the podcast and it's great and they uh, i it, it's it's awesome and very very much appreciated because without you guys listening we obviously wouldn't be here for 100 episodes so thank you guys very very much for for being an audience for listening being a part of kind of the studio loot family and everything we have going on uh with studio loot uh, and this podcast being one of them and kind of one of our cornerstones of what we do and we just we appreciate you guys very very much Yes, yes. Thank you from the bottom of our heart to 100 more episodes, Bordy, uh, and beyond. Uh, All right, guys, let's uh, enough uh, with the chit chat. We'll hop right into the news. All right, Bordy. So uh, not a lot of news still. I think, uh, you know, we're we're still kind of all getting back into uh, the holiday or back from the holiday break. Uh, So... Uh, the only things we kind of had to talk about today, obviously, is there is a, a Steam sale. If for some reason, you've kind of been waiting uh, for New World to go on sale. Uh, it's on sale. Uh, it's 25% off, I believe. So $30 again, uh, like the sell uh, before. Uh, so if you haven't, for some reason, bought New World yet and, and you're listening to this podcast, just know uh, that that the game is on sale again. So uh, you guys can go and, and get the podcast or excuse me. You can get New World uh, for twenty five percent off, so thirty bucks. So obviously, a good deal at forty dollars, an even better deal at um, at thirty. So uh, go pick up that over there on the Steam sale, the winter Steam sale, or maybe you're waiting to buy your kid the game, or maybe you're waiting to buy your for your friends. We're waiting to buy the game. Uh, the time is now. Obviously, the game's on sale uh, for thirty bucks. And then the next one, dude, is I get so on Reddit there was a post uh, which is interesting. Because we're all like now we're on one of the most populated servers. We get to see like the best of the best. I feel like in in terms of like you know best in slot roles and economy. Like you know we're experiencing New World. I think at, at, at a pretty uh, decent pace uh, compared to you know maybe the server we were on definitely, but other people's servers. And 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 now it has kind of shown up uh, in uh, or on Reddit that that the six hundred and one gear score items are are uh possible in game dude i i have never seen one before uh, but but there's several reports uh, of this happening uh Bordy, uh, what do you think man uh, we kind of thought like maybe now is not the time to increase the gear score but apparently it's already higher than we thought it was <laughs> yeah, I think the 601 gear score thing is a bug for sure. It's just some some calculations in the math that's rounding some stuff up to make a gear uh, from 600 to 601. I don't even think it's that big of a deal. I think they'll get it fixed before too long. They'll fix the calculation, fix the math, and it won't be an issue anymore. But it is kind of interesting to see people roll these 601 gear score items. <laughs> it's it's kind of crazy, man. Uh, I would like to roll a legendary that's 601. I would like to roll one of those. I wonder if the value of a 601 skyrocket rockets man could i sell a 601 uh, for gold cap i think for you, i think you could definitely do that just because of the novelty of the item i think it's pretty cool uh to see because you know i would think that you know who knows how they're going to deal with the it, when they do choose to in, increase the gear score how are they going to deal with legendaries at that point because right now the only way yeah. you can get a legendary is being at max gear score which is 600 you know are every piece of item from 600 to 700 going to be legendary and then are they going to start like a mythic thing and you know what i mean who knows what they're going to do uh in the future and then what are they going to do with the perks that are on there too you know you have you have all these perks that are on there so then if you make something uh, like a like a mythic or something like that then then what do you do with the perks that are on the legendary are they going to add another perk or that's what i mean maybe another perk yeah Yeah, like that yeah, I don't know. But then that gets a little crazy, man. Then that gets really, really powerful, I think, because I think the uh, some of the legendaries are already quite powerful. So I don't know. That's uh, that's going to be an interesting thing to see how it progresses uh, beyond 600 gear score, because you're absolutely right. Like, what are they going to do with the legendary items? Big, big true. Yeah. And this may be, you know, maybe the only opportunity that that any players get to craft a 601 legendary if they choose to go back to like, OK, well, now like 610 is the only legendary. So like you you yeah. know your 600 ones can be improved to 610 but you know uh, the only way to roll one now is to have a 610 so I don't know we'll yeah. we'll see a, a pretty cool thing uh, obviously like you said the calculations maybe just a touch off or maybe there's a decimal point that we don't know about in the 2% increase the quality which is a lot of people's assumptions I think so 
Uh, yeah, uh, we'll, it's just crazy, man, uh, because I think a lot of us expect, or at least the, the devs have mentioned, that we are getting a gear score increase soon of some sort. Uh, so it's just interesting to see some 601s pop up in, in the game, maybe due to maybe something that happened in a patch or a previous patch to maybe prepare for the next update. Who knows? Uh, but but they're here, dude. Uh, 601 is here. You're not you're not max level unless you have 601 gear in every <laughs> slot. So, <laughs> oh boy. Which I don't I don't think I think most are, are, are all of the perks uh, do not show any significant increases to percentages or numbers from the 600 to the 601. So, and then obviously your, your, your stat is always, it's going to be 25 on armor. Uh, I think it's 30 on weapons. So even if it's 601, so not, not, not a lot of, it's basically a novelty item at this point. Like you were saying, I don't think it improves the actual quality of the item much, if at all. So they're, but yeah, they're there. Yeah, so. Definitely. They're there. They're there. I don't think it was intended by any stretch, but they are, but they are there. People are getting them. So just, just remember, be on the lookout uh, for the 601 gear on your, on your server. Cause apparently they're, they're popping up sometimes. So uh, yeah. All right. Well, Bordy, that again, not a lot of news and, and we got a pretty beefy uh, main topic as we are, we're going to interview uh, Greg again uh, from the Amazon team. Uh, so that about does it for the news. Uh, Bordy, without further ado, let's hop over uh, to the egg uh, from from the Amazon uh, game team, the New World team, uh, for our main topic of the week. All right again, it's great to have you with us, Greg. Uh, dude, it's a long time coming. I guess uh, you know, <laughs> 100 episodes in the making. Uh, it's great to have you on, man. Uh, and uh, yeah. I guess let's. Why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself? Uh, to our audience, uh, who you are and, and what you do. Sure. Uh, first and foremost, 100 episodes. Congratulations. That's quite the achievement. Thank you. Um, so, yeah, congrats on that. Uh, yeah, my name is Greg Henniger. I'm the creator relations lead um, for Amazon Games. So, you know, I work with a bunch of content creators. I run the creator program, um, you know, work on campaigns like uh, Battle for New World. Uh, I've been with Amazon for almost four years now. Um, and most of that has been on, uh, has been on new world. Yeah. Uh, it's, you're basically a cat herder is what you're saying. You, you work with creators that basically we, <laughs> we do a little yeah. bit of that and, and yeah, it's like, uh, you know, it, it's a job of jobs. I, I'll say that you do a great job, uh, Greg. Yeah. Uh, so you, you know, one of the things I think, uh, is, is interesting about your position at, at AGS is now, uh, you're, you're pivoting or not pivoting, but maybe I guess like, uh, you're, you're double dipping in, in the game. So we got New World, of mm. course. You've been working a long time in that. And now uh, it, it, it was just recently announced that in February, uh, you'll, we'll have Lost Ark as well. So uh, yep. what's that like, splitting, splitting your uh, time uh, between those two games? It's, it's a lot, right? I mean, uh, I, I was on New World for almost four years, and I got to kind of really hyper-focus on that. Uh, back when you know, we were in Alpha, we had a much smaller team, so um, I was doing, you know, a lot of the commu community manager type stuff. Um, but now, as we're coming closer, when we when we're starting to get closer to launch, um, I've shifted my focus into more of a the creator relations um, role. So I got to work on a lot of awesome things with uh, content creators. You know, building the creator program, like I said. Um, and then, you know, Amazon games is not going anywhere and we're just getting larger. Uh, so when we announced Lost Ark, it's like, awesome. I get to go work on that game too, you know, and everything else is coming down the pipe. Um, so trying to split my time between the two is, is challenging, right? Because we're about to launch a Lost Ark in February. Um, but you know, we're not stopping supporting new world. So, it's having to you know find that balance of uh, of making those two things uh, su as successful as I can um, while not you know dropping any balls. So, I, I need to hire like eight more people. Uh, so, if anyone's looking, uh, you know, raise your hand, send me a resume. Yeah, 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 yeah. We'll 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 field your offers, Greg. Okay, yeah. Send Thank it to you. the Thank YouTube you. comments. That's obviously the best place for <laughs> any yeah. informational uh, you know uh, data. So. Yeah, you send them through the YouTube comments. We'll get them to Greg. No, no problem. If you if you want to work for AGS, yeah, this is your first line of uh, of application. So, 
Uh, yeah, dude. I, I used to play a lot of uh, Lost Ark uh, on mm. the... Uh, well, should I be saying this? I don't even know. J the Japan servers on uh, on a... Sure. Uh, yeah, I've been playing, obviously, uh, through uh, Exit Lag or, or whatever. And so it's, but it, it was... A, <laughs> yeah. I had a great time, man, but it was like, man, I wish that this was available uh, in our region so I could play with my friends. And that, now that it is, uh, or it's going to be, it's going to be mm -hmm. so for sure. I yeah, Lost like Ark is a really is a really cool game, you know. Um, we're also coming at it from a very different perspective, right? Because it's been out for almost three years, two yeah. or three years. Yep. Um, and so it's unlike New World where, you know, we're in this black box for ever uh and you know we're starting to like leak information out about what new world is you know introducing it to the public like people already know what lost ark is like they have a very good understanding uh you know when we had um open play sessions for people to go in and, and test out the game so uh you know marketing lost ark and new world uh you know they're completely different beasts um, but it, yeah, Lost Ark is a crazy game. Like, you know, the, the diversity within the game, like in, in one area, you're like, uh, you know, in a Skyrim type zone with Vikings. And then in another area, there's like mechs that are fighting <laughs> dragons. And then you go to another area where there's like tiny people and like floating hamsters and stuff. Like it's, it's a crazy game and there's like a lot to explore in it. Uh, so I think that's probably my favorite part about marketing it is there's so many angles you can come at that game from um whereas new world you know like we were telling like the story of eternum uh isabella like the the lost the ancients like all of that it was kind of you know singularly focused whereas lost ark is just it's all over the map yeah it, it is uh a very unique uh <laughs> lore and and set of stories for sure Mm -hmm. uh, but obviously it's, it's good to see you guys, you know, growing the catalog a little bit. Obviously this is a game I was a fan of, uh, before, so it's kind of cool to see you guys adapt that as well. Um, but obviously I think we're here, we're here to talk about new world, right? So, yeah, so we'll let's talk new world. Well, uh, so one of the things, uh, you know, again, me and BDLG, uh, have been following the game, covering the game, playing the game, uh, for a long time. And, and one of the, I guess one of the. The big markers uh, in my mind uh, that was kind of, I guess, a pivotal point of the game and, and the transition, uh, you know, from what it is today mm -hmm. was that during the development phase, there was a, a pretty long delay, like a year. And, and I guess uh, our the first question would be like, what did that look like on the inside? You know what I mean? I know, uh, you know, from a content standpoint, you know, a lot of us kind of, I, I guess it was like, you know. Uh, we have a year to kind of step back and, and wait on this game and, and see how it turns out. And obviously, mm -hmm. you guys did a great job uh, being transparent during that year. But what was it like on the interior of, of the of the um, the studio uh, kind of in this delay phase and kind of pivoting the, the overall, like, I guess, approach at, at development of the game? Yeah, no, that's a great question. I mean, it, it was, you know, in part um, really exciting because it's rare that you get the opportunity to, you know, step back, uh, you know, evaluate, figure out how you need to move forward and then get the chance to do that. Right. Um, I don't think a lot of studios uh, would have would have gone that direction in, you know, giving the game the opportunity to become the game it needs to be. Um, and we saw a lot of opportunities. I know the development team was really excited about the the additional time uh, because we could add a lot of things that weren't originally on the docket um, to to make for launch. Um, you know, a, a lot of the the features that we brought out during that that year period, um, I think, made the game a lot better um, and more exciting for for our players. So it, it was it was you know daunting, but also like really exciting. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, Bordy. He was like he more of like a survival guy, right? So he's actually the one that turned me on to the game, uh, because yeah. of the, the the way that the game was before. He's like, "Yo, this game is coming up. It's pretty cool. Uh, you know, I want you to check it out." And then as we said, I've always been like a big MMO person, and it's funny because as he introduced me to the game, the game started to transition into an MMO. So it was mm -hmm. it was, uh, it was obviously a great change uh, in in the right direction, I think, because obviously you guys had a massive. Uh, launch and, and a successful uh you know game so far so 
Yeah. And I mean, you know, we, we were in alpha for a long time and, you know, we were constantly talking to players, listening to their feedback. Like there was a, you know, this wasn't a, a siloed decision by, you know, from the top down. Um, like we really were listening to our players, um, finding out what they wanted and what they needed. And, uh, I think we, we went in the right direction. For sure. Yeah. Th so, so I have a question for you, Greg, the, the, uh, all right, so let's move on into the launch phase of New World now, right? Mm -hmm. So the alpha and all that was pretty cool, and the way the game has transitioned has been really, really fun to watch and to see this push into like more of an MMO phase for sure. But let's talk about like how was it whenever the game actually launched and all of the hype around the game and how great the launch for New World was insane, man. It was like the amount of players that came to play the game and just the craziness. Like, what was it like behind the scenes? Like with, with all of the uh, the servers that you had to open up and all the the massive influx of players and then transitioning that into like into now when kind of the player base is leveled out things have gotten a little bit a little bit more stable and kind of mm -hmm. the bumps in between because there was some crazy times from launch until now so how, how was all that man yeah I, I mean it was it was a wild roller coaster uh i mean <laughs> I if you if you even go back further um when we did the preview event right uh that was when like the world really yeah. got like i think it was 11 days something like that like where we just opened up new world to anybody that wanted to play um so a, a lot of people like jumped in and they checked it out and they sat you know they they had good things to say about it and so we you know we felt relatively confident going into you know the launch of new world um but i mean it it completely took us by surprise you know in the like we were the number one game on twitch for a long time we were like breaking records on steam you know it was it was extremely exciting uh but also like oh no <laughs> like there's a lot of people that are coming <laughs> yeah, into yeah. this game you yeah. know um so it was like you know one of the best problems you could possibly have mm -hmm. um and i mean it was all hands on deck for weeks weeks like nobody slept yeah. like you know we we're we we're like you said we we're opening up new worlds we were trying to um you know, smooth out issues. Uh, so many people were so excited to jump in, and that was like very humbling. Um, but yeah, it was it was all hands on deck for. It still kind of is actually, but uh, you know, for for the first couple of weeks, it was it was intense for sure. So uh, based on the the response, I guess to the game at launch, are you guys expanding your team, or or what is that? What does that kind of look like? I guess interior. Wise, you know, I know that you got uh, you have a lot more people, I guess, uh, you know, sticking with the game and, and playing with the game now. I think that the servers have kind of leveled themselves out at this point. So, uh, yeah, we're, we're definitely seeing, you know, um, we're not seeing those like 87 hour queues anymore, uh, which is great <laughs> uh, because that was kind of, you know, that turned people off. Um, but yeah, the servers are definitely starting to uh, to level out and, you know, we're getting more people into the game. We had our first round of, you know, server transfers. So people are starting to kind of migrate to where they want their, you know, forever home to be uh, in New World, which is uh, which is really great um, because, you know, there are two really different phases of a game right there's like the launch period the build up to launch the launch window and then you know then your game now belongs to the world and you are like a live service title and so the way you operate um a live service game is very different than the way you would uh you know operate an alpha or something like the game is always on now it's always going we need to uh to keep that wheel turning um and so that's just kind of a a mental shift um, in the way you the way you work on a on a title, especially you know in, in my regard when it comes to like the marketing of the uh, of the game and supporting the creators who are now you know standing up and saying, hey, like New World, I'm going to be making content for New World uh, because ahead of time, like like shows like yours, you know, you were you were very much saying like we are dedicated to this game, we're going to make content for this game. Um but there is, you know, in the background there's a lot of people saying like, "Oh yeah, you know, I'm I'm definitely going to play New World. I'm going to make all this content for New World." And then they either, you know, they either did or they didn't. And so now we're in the phase of where we can like find the creators who are, you know, very much dedicated to New World. Uh and that's like really exciting to me. Um, you know, we, we're looking for the people who 
you know, have been playing the game, who are constantly making content. Um, and, you know, we saw a lot of people who jumped in to see, you know, oh, hey, this is a new game, new game of the week. I'm going to play it. Uh, I'm going to enjoy it, but I'm going to go, you know, variety streamers, right? Um, so now we're starting to see the, like, diehard um, new world content creators uh, and trying to find those people and, and support them in ways that we can is uh, it's probably my favorite part of the job right now. Um, just seeing, like, the passion that, that people like yourselves uh, have for new world and want new world to succeed and continue and grow um uh i love seeing that it's great yeah for sure i think like people like us who've been covering it for so long we see the massive potential that the game has and right now it's like transitioning into this really good spot i think that it's 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 just it's a lot of fun it's very addicting and i see the the future for the game just being super bright so it is fun to watch all these content creators kind of react and see kind of what it was like and go through the bumps and the transition to to get to where i think it's gonna be in the future it's very very Mm -hmm. exciting so so let's let's talk about the the actual kind of game for a little bit and and how has how has like the or if at all how has like the 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 vision or the goals for for new world in and of itself shifted like since since launch has there been any change of plans and what direction you're wanting to take the game like uh uh, i know the game is kind of more transitioned kind of into into like a, a theme uh a theme park a style game it's kind of a good mixture right between a sandbox and a theme park style game now is that still going to be the direction moving forward is that kind of where it's at um like because yeah. there's there's open world zones there's instance content you know there's all mm-hmm. kinds of stuff like what can we expect yeah if you uh I, I think scott lane gave a really good um you know look at the 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 vision in the future of new world in that uh developer update video uh, that we released a little while ago, um, but it's really about that balance between PvP and PVE. You know, the the massive shift that we made from alpha to launch. You know, we're not we're not going to fundamentally turn the game around again. Um, you know, I think the team is really happy with the the design and the direction, and we're just going to continue to iterate in that in that space. Um, that balance between PVE and PVP is like super important. Having them coexist with each other and not having, you know, one version, you know, having it become a totally PVP game or a totally PVE game. Um, you know, I, I think the design team is has really kind of locked in on um, on that path, and and we're going to keep adding uh, new features and uh, content that's going to go in that direction. Yeah, that that's encouraging to hear. We, me and BDLG, we we we're big PVP people, and, and and it's great because you guys have stayed pretty consistent about that throughout the development phases and 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 now into launch, continuing to support the PVP community and, and people that are interested uh, in both sides of the game. I think you mm-hmm. know I was just saying this today as I was, I mean, admittedly playing New World during a meeting of ours that we were in, and and do the ga- the gathering I system. Knew it. Hey man, hey hey, uh, I was performing fine. Listen, okay, so so dude, you, it's like the gathering is so like underrated. I I feel like it's it, mm. not since probably I would say Skyrim that I played a game that you can literally just walk up to anything, interact with it, cut down a tree, the tree falls down. Like it's just like I don't know the the scope in which new world covers as far as like a game, like a, just a video game goes, I think is pretty tremendous. And I, and to Bordy's point earlier, uh, the future of the game, I think is very bright because of how, how much detail you guys have placed at the ground level. Uh, you know, I've played a ton of games at launch and, and really, uh, you know, the, the, uh, I guess the level of systems that you guys have in initially, I think is, is next level. Uh, so let me ask you this, dude, I'm going to throw some curveballs at you. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. (laughs) So, so like, okay, so Greg, I'm talking to Greg here. Okay. Gregory, whatever you go, you know, uh, you're, you a Greg or a Gregory? I I was born a Gregory, but I prefer Greg. Okay. All right. All right. All right. Greg, I want to, I want to like, you know, you're in trouble, Gregory type (laughs) of thing. (laughs) You know, what, what, all right. What feature would you be most excited with? I obviously ignoring your, you know, background knowledge or whatever you have in the game. What right. what feature are you most excited about seeing in, in New World in the future? Right, I, I'm not. I can't break uh, any news here. Uh, I uh, we yeah, have I'm to sworn, ask. Yeah, I'm yeah, sworn yeah, yeah. to secrecy. Um, but you know, I I I thought the 
once we started adding the expeditions, um, you know, into the game, because, you know, they weren't originally a part of New World. Uh, I think that was a huge bonus. Um, it During that period of time we were talking about earlier, um, we were at adding expeditions. Um, you you can fundamentally expect to see more of that, more interesting mm -hmm. ones. Um, I think the the mutators that we talked about uh, in that in that dev video that are going to be coming relatively soon actually are going to shake things up a lot uh, in really interesting and fun ways. So I, I'm really excited about the mutators and more um, more expeditions coming in the future. But honestly, one of my favorite things, and you touched on it uh, just a little bit there, was like. I really just like going into New World and walking around, right? Like mm -hmm. just existing in that space. Like the sound design is incredible. Um, you know, the visuals are great. It's like a very like therapeutic kind of calming, <laughs> you know, space to walk around in. Uh, chopping down trees is immensely satisfying. Um, but yeah, I like I like just walking around in there. Maybe fishing. Uh, you know, I, I don't flag for PvP immediately. Um, yeah, I just I, I just enjoy spending time in in the in Eternum. And so adding more of Eternum to Eternum is what I'm most looking forward to. Um, and that will certainly happen as well. Yeah. All right, so I would ask you when we're getting, uh, you know, there's a lot of speculation going around about Brimstone Sands. Uh, I would ask you when we're getting that, but uh, obviously you're not going <laughs> to tell me, Greg. So, so I not tell what, <laughs> <laughs> uh, we can't say we didn't try. One of the one of the questions I do have, though, is we talked about this a little bit before we started recording the podcast. Is the the developer um, blog or or video or whatever you want to call it that you did mm -hmm. was excellent. I, I it was oh, three thanks. and a half hours long. It was amazing. Yeah. I think you, yeah. you did such a good job. <laughs> Uh, hosting it and it was packed full of information that the community mm. was just asking about uh, tons of tons of questions that were all over the forums and things that just hot topics and you guys hit on almost every one of them are those are those things we can expect moving forward those types of videos and that type of communication and 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 uh, talking about the new features coming up and uh, mm -hmm. is that type of content is that something we can expect in the future it's yeah, that's certainly the intent. Um, nice. And it, I, I really enjoyed doing that video as well, because I think it 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 kind of put a human face on, you know, some of the developers um, yeah. and kind of, you know, humanized uh, New World a little bit for our players. Uh, we we certainly covered a lot of stuff like like I think it was the video ended up being like an hour and a half long or a little bit longer than that. Um, but we ended we wanted to cover a lot of important topics. Um, like the issue of uh, banning or bugs or release notes. Um, I thought it was important that, uh, you know, we, we kind of owned up to um, the issues that we that were encountering and, and we're attempting to fix. Um, so I would say that if, if we do another one, um, it will probably be less of that because now that we've kind of covered all of that, um, you know, we'll want to look forward and and talk about new stuff. Obviously, you know, we want to talk about current, you know, balance changes and things like that. But uh, you know, we'll we'll obviously want to talk about new things as well. Yeah, sounds good. It won't be as long. I promise. Yeah. Hey man, we're okay with it. You were. I, I think I watched the entire thing over an entire like vacate, like a Christmas vacation. So it was yeah, nice was content a, was for the drive. Day. You know, I, I was a. It's a track. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was that was a long day, and uh, you know our, our developers, you know, took time out of their out of their schedules to come in and do it. Um, but I don't think I can ask them to, to to do that a bunch of times for that for that period of period of time. It was it was a long one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, dude, I, I got a little, and this is a you know uh, nothing nothing weighty, but but I got a little bit of ra some rapid fire questions for you, Ooh, uh, Greg. Okay. You know, I, I we got to get an immediate response here. We got to get the you know. <laughs> The, the instincts of Greg uh, oh, okay. in play here, okay? So, uh, real quick here, favorite weapon in New World? Uh, I, I The hatchet. I hey, really like hey, it. Hey, let's go! I'm a fan. <laughs> I'm a fan. I remember, I remember when the hatchet was like crazy overpowered i think during the preview event or the entire length of new world until, <laughs> until recently <laughs> at some point now like, we know I, why greg greg's a, a hatchet fan so I'm if you guys are wondering fan. why it was so strong yeah greg's in there yeah. lobbying for you for it sure. is very satisfying it's a very satisfying weapon <laughs> i like it a lot all right dude Fa favorite lego set i know you're a lego guy 
Uh, we got you got a oh, lot can, of background. Can you tell? Yeah, yeah. Dude, yeah, yeah, yeah. What's your most memorable Lego set you've ever put together? Mm. Uh, I also I have all the NASA ones, which are pretty awesome. Uh, the Saturn V uh, was a really fun build, and it comes apart in the different segments like it would as it was launching. Um, that's a really good one. But that Jurassic Park gate back there, and the and the T Rex was. I'm a huge Jurassic Park fan, yeah. <laughs> uh, so it, it was deeply satisfying to uh, to make because they did such a great job replicating the 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 gate, the iconic you know Jurassic Park one gate. Um, but building that T Rex, there was a tiny little frog that sits inside of the T Rex while you're building it on like step eighteen or whatever. They're like, put this little frog in here, and I was like, what is that? A Oh, that's really clever because <laughs> yeah, yeah. of the am amphibian DNA. Ah, so like you can tell that like the, uh, the the builders, the people who create the Lego sets, also have an immense passion for what they're making. Uh, so I think that was probably my favorite. Favorite, favorite. I have, I have a story. I, I, so the Naboo fighter from episode one. I was mm -hmm. a kid when I was a kid. I, I uh, Saved up all my babysitting money, dude, and I was gonna get the, I was gonna get this one Lego. I remember that one, and then and then me and my cousins bought the Pod Racer thing, and I was kind of an mm. idiot, you know, back in the day. And I was like, "Yo, I want Anakin. He's like the main character." But the <laughs> other two are so cool. I missed out on that. So those are the two that obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The uh, the Naboo Starfighter is like a really sleek, you know, yeah, like yellow. That... Yeah, like uh, smooth and like pointy edges. That that would be a that would be a challenge for a Lego. Yeah, Lego build. yeah, it was uh, very fancy, and then it, it lasted all of like probably a week, I think. Right. And then of right. course it gets deassembled and then made into my own creative spaceships. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> Good. But, but yeah, all right, all right. How many versions of Risk do you does Greg own personally? I know, I know. I've seen Twitter One, pictures of two, your of your three, <laughs> four. Downstairs, there's. Uh, three more so i think i have like <laughs> seven or eight versions seven or of risk eight. perfect i love it have i you, love risk have you ever heard of a game called small world i have not you got you got to check it out dude some some guy at the game shop the board just, game yeah it's oh, just, okay. it's like a better i, I don't want to say obviously you're a risk fan but yeah, i think it's terrible, a better terrible. version <laughs> of risk uh, on honestly i'll check so it you out you gotta try it out small world uh, uh for sure all right dude here here's gonna be this is gonna be a very tough one for you dude mm. okay so, mm -hmm. so Malcolm from Jurassic Park versus Jim from The Office. Okay, well, who do you, who are you choosing here? I know you're. Are, are there are they like fist fighting? Uh, well, that's a, <laughs> I, I I don't think that's a fair. Yeah, Malcolm is clearly has a lot of masculinity going on. Maybe yeah. favorite memes. Okay, between the two. Mm, yeah, mm. yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I use a lot of Jim gifts uh, on social. Uh, I think my favorite one is is where he kind of like slowly gets down into the car, <laughs> yeah, yeah. like he you know doesn't want to be involved in the conversation. Uh, yeah. I use that one quite a bit. Um, but yeah, Ian Malcolm. I mean, he he just has that incredible laugh. You know, when he's in the uh -huh. uh, ha 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 and uh, in the in the helicopter. That's a really good one. Yeah, I feel, um, I feel like Jeff Goldblum is ever, always Jeff Goldblum. He's like one of the. Uh, <laughs> What is He's the actor? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He's the best. Jeff yeah. Goldblum. He has that show on Disney Plus right now. Oh, it's like dude. the world according to Jeff Goldblum. Yeah. I eat that up. He's great. I'm a few, I'm a and, huge sneaker guy. And and that sneaker episode was like a yeah, it's in historic. Yeah. Uh having him go through it and talk about the world of uh, you know. Yeah. But he's always Jeff Goldblum when you he see is. him, right? Like he when he sure was is. in Thor, I was like, well, that's Jeff Goldblum <laughs> having a blast, you know? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he's uh, something else. That's for sure. Uh, <laughs> uh, and then, and then, last one is Scott Lane as majestic as he appears on camera. You know, you get to see him in person almost every day. Oh I'm yeah, sure. is he? Yeah, yeah. We, the flowing yeah. locks, right? Yeah. Uh, during quarantine, um, like right when quarantine started, he and I both decided to just grow out our hair because why not right so like i had i had well hair i can like tell you uh, one reason why one uh, you maybe not to grow out your hair and and that maybe some follicle challenges but yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i finally i finally grew out my hair because I, I wanted to see like if i even could uh because i've always kept it pretty short um and so scott and i we were just growing out our hair more and more and after i got after i got my second shot uh I was like, all right, I got my second shot, time to cut off the hair. Scott, 
did not cut yeah. off the hair. He <laughs> kept it going. And uh, I, he was very upset with me when I cut my hair. Um, but I, I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm very no. proud. I'm very proud of him that he is, uh, he's kept that legacy going. He's got to. Yeah. He, 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 thank you again, Greg, uh, so much for joining us on this episode. It, it's been yeah. a blast, man. Uh, and, and we appreciate you showing the kindness enough to, sh to be on episode 100. Uh, we appreciate yeah, it. Man. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. I appreciate, uh, appreciate the offer. All right, boy. Yeah, absolute yeah. pleasure, man. Yeah. To, to uh, another yeah, a, hundred episodes, is, right? Yeah. Is gear score increasing a new one? Mm, interesting question. Uh -oh, uh, yeah, you gotta that one uh, lock it away. All right, I maybe tried. maybe on yeah, the, maybe on another episode, Italian episode two hundred. Uh, there you go. There yeah, you go. Definitely. I will talk about gear score on episode two hundred. All right, perfect. Perfect. We'll hold you to it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, uh, Greg. Yeah, thanks a bunch, man. We appreciate you very much for coming on here. It's been it's been awesome, dude. Thank you. Yeah, and thank you again for creating the show. It's like a really great source of information uh, for all of our players. Uh, and you've been at it for so long, like your passion and dedication to New World is uh, is admirable. So thank you uh, for continuing to do this show. And thank you, everybody that watches the show and engages with the show. Um, it's great. Uh, so thanks for thanks for making the show. Thanks again, man. And uh, <laughs> we will see you on in another 100 episodes. All right. See you in another hundred. <laughs> All right. Later. All right. To wrap things up, let's head over to the company of the week. All right. So our company of the week this week is called Unhinged. Their region is NA East. Their server is O O O No. Is that how you say that, Red? A Ho No. A O No. NA East. A Ho O No. Yeah. Their faction is Syndicate, uh, and they are currently recruiting. So go check them out. Unhinged is the name. They also have a website, Unhinged.gg, which is actually pretty dope. Go check that out over there as well. They have their Discord linked here, and of course, we'll make sure we link everything that I'm talking about here in the show notes below. Everywhere where this, this podcast can be found. And it says uh, that they're here because you enjoy gaming and you've been doing it long enough that you don't need some streamer to tell you how to play. You're here because uh, you appreciate the company of like-minded players and you're here to create a legacy to prevail over foes and to reap the spoils of war. Welcome brothers and sisters to Unhinged. And apparently they don't like meta gaming, so they're kind of trying to play off meta. They want the, Basically the whole premise behind Unhinged is that they want you to play the game how you want to play it, not to listen to the masses, not to listen to what's going on with the meta or what's best or whatever they just want you to play the game how you want to play it and enjoy it so that's kind of the premise of their company or at least that's what it seems like by reading the description so if you like the way that sounds go check them out unhinged in a east company sounds uh sounds fun sounds like it'd be an enjoyable place to be yes and, and we thank you uh to unhinge uh for putting your company advertisement up on new world fans and again thank you to all our patreon you'll see uh, your accreditations in the show notes after the show thank you guys so much again for for listening and watching uh, our podcast for 100 episodes some of you have been here since episode one uh and we thank you guys uh, from the bottom of our heart uh yes. for all uh, your support and we look forward to another 100 episodes of new world to go